Have you ever heard of a Fujitsu laptop? Well, neither have I, until now. I've followed new technologies and hardware for years and only recently have I learned about the existence of this very large company. When I first acquired this laptop, I figured that the Fujitsu brand was just some small time company that went bankrupt years ago and that's why I haven't heard of them. And wow, was I wrong on multiple levels. For starters, no, the company isn't bankrupt, and its establishment date of June 20th, 1935 makes it the second oldest IT company in the world, second only to IBM. I've read a large portion of the company's significant events as mentioned on the website, and they've accomplished some great things. For example, they created Japan's first supercomputer as well as commercialized the world's first 64 kilobyte RAM. So, given their multinational reach with offices across the world, I still have no idea how I remained ignorant of this company for so long. Clearly though, this has changed, as today I present to you the Fujitsu Lifebook SH560. This notebook was released back in 2010 with some lower end specs in the Lifebook series. Inside this specific model, you'll find a dual core Pentium P6000 clocked at 1.86 GHz, 2 GB of RAM clocked at 1066 MHz, a 320 GB 5400 RPM hard drive, and a basic Intel HD graphics chip. However, it seems that this laptop has received an upgrade, since when I initially found it, it had 6GB of RAM. I don't know why someone would upgrade such an already terrible laptop, but it probably did improve performance. In addition, it originally shipped with Windows 7, but for today's test, I'll be running Windows 10 on it. I tried my best to reset the laptop and keep Windows 7, but it was stuck in a foreign language that no amount of Google Translate could fix. Long story short, I removed the drive, formatted it, stuck Windows 10 in it, and began testing. One final thing I'd like to mention before reviewing the benchmarks is just how small this laptop truly is. It has a quote unquote super fine display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. And honestly, it looks really good since the screen size is only 13 inches. Its small size is a bit annoying though, and that when the fans reach higher RPMs, it actually vibrates the entire laptop. It's not much, but it is noticeable. But now that we got that all out of the way, how about we go take a look at some gaming and general usage tests on this laptop. The first thing you do when you get a new computer is launch Microsoft Edge. Not for browsing, but for downloading Chrome. Following that, I downloaded MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner's statistics server. Browsing the web was relatively quick and websites didn't take very long to load. So I could definitely see this computer serving well as just a cheap internet browser. Now for the gaming benchmarks. Given that this computer was running an old Intel HD graphics chip, I decided to start off nice and easy and ran Doom 2. Gameplay was fine all around with quick loading times and smooth frame rates. This, however, did not remain consistent in most other games ran on the system. So I started off confident and ran a decently demanding title for this laptop, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I really wanted to stress test the system, so I ran all graphics options at their highest and ran the game in 1280x768p. For some reason though, it wouldn't allow me to change the anti-aliasing quality. With this configuration, the system only managed to pull an average frame rate of 18 FPS with none too enjoyable gameplay. So I dropped the game down to its lowest settings and ran it in 480p. As expected, the frame rate significantly increased and got an overall average frame rate of 31. In sum, the game was playable, but not ideal. I then took things back to an even older installment of the franchise, Grand Theft Auto 3. For this test, I maxed out all settings and ran the game in 1366x768p, the native resolution of this laptop. After a few minutes of testing, the average frame rate was 28 FPS and gameplay was very smooth. However, if so desired, a higher frame rate could be achieved by lowering some graphical options. Following the GTA 3 test, I played a bit of Half-Life 2. Even though this game is quite old, I still ran it with the lowest settings to try and preserve a decent resolution of 1366 by 768 This laptop actually performed decently in this test and higher than my expectations. Although it took a decent amount of time when loading into new areas of the map, the average frame rate was a solid 41 FPS and gameplay was smooth. Next, I decided to run Minecraft, the simplistic block game that can run on most any computer. But for some reason, this Fujitsu laptop decided that it loathed Mojang's creation with all its heart and felt the need to frequently crash. Initially loading into the game took over 3 minutes where I then configured the settings. For some odd reason, I felt optimistic, and even though settings were at the lowest with only 2 chunks, running the game in 768p was a very poor decision. The average frame rate was a meager 3 FPS, and gameplay felt like a slideshow. This didn't last long though, since the game promptly crashed. So, I restarted it, where it crashed twice more while attempting to load. Finally though, I was able to re-enter the world and quickly threw the resolution down to 240p where the frame rate sat in the lower teens. This lasted for about 20 seconds though, where the game promptly crashed. Long story short, Minecraft was painfully unplayable. With this catastrophic failure, I took testing back to 2003 with Need for Speed Underground. Feeling good about once again having a playable game, I put all settings to their highest and ran the game in 1024 by 768 p The average frame rate came to be a solid 27 FPS when it was relatively enjoyable. An interesting little thing about it is that when a car interacted with a physics object such as cones, the frame rate would plummet. Still though, this installment of the Need for Speed franchise did run well. 
Having a general idea for this computer's capabilities, I then tried to run Far Cry. I let it run the auto detect feature to automatically settle the graphical options and it deemed this computer well enough to run the game on high. After a few minutes of gameplay, I felt that these settings were a good fit. So, the average frame rate result was 31 FPS, with occasional dips down to the upper teens when action picked up. However, if I was to play this game on a more long term scale, I would definitely lower the settings a bit to increase the frame rate. I then took a look at Morrowind from the highly successful Elder Scrolls series. With all settings at maximum and a resolution of 1024x768, the laptop got a respectable average of 39 FPS. There was an issue though. Whenever you looked at the NPC character model, the frame rate would noticeably drop. So I sought to fix this issue. I put on the lowest settings and set the resolution to 480p where the game then crashed. After a restart, the average frame rate was 45, but the NPC model issue was not resolved. Overall though, Morrowind was plenty playable on this laptop. For the last test today, I played Return to Castle Wolfenstein from all the way back in 2001. And if the gameplay seems a bit odd, it's because whenever I clicked, it tapped me out of the game, an issue I've never encountered before. However, the lowest settings and a resolution of 480p, this laptop managed to get a decent average frame rate of 52 FPS. So there you have it, that's just how poorly a lower end Fujitsu laptop from 2010 will perform in gaming and internet browsing tests. But before we leave, I'd like to highlight a few specific aspects of this laptop. Coming into these tests, at first I figured that the slow 5400 RPM hard drive would be the main bottleneck of the system, but really it wasn't. Aside from Half-Life 2 and the ill-fated Minecraft benchmarks, loading times were relatively reasonable considering the age of this laptop. In addition, while conducting the research for this laptop, I couldn't find this model anywhere on the used market. Usually, most old tech can be found online for cheap, but I couldn't locate this specific model for sale anywhere. However, there were plenty of RAM and battery replacements to be found, but no one outright sold this laptop. Only buy it for less than $25 since its only function is going to be limited to web browsing and older games. Oddly though, when I first got this laptop, I anticipated that it would have some pretty decent internal components. I thought this because the system had a fingerprint scanner, which I've only seen available on higher end security based laptops. Another thing I'd like to mention is that the refresh rate of this computer screen was only 40Hz. I found this weird that it wasn't the standard 60Hz, but I guess that's just a testament to how dated this laptop truly is. In sum though, I guess this dated Fujitsu laptop is not completely useless. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, please subscribe because that helps a lot in video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye.